to our Good News program. We're so thankful that you tuned in. These are the best lessons, and I know that you are enjoying them because there's nothing in this life that is eternal but the Word of God. Jesus Christ is from eternity to eternity. So today we're going to ask you to listen to these truths and learn what God has for all of us and the wonderful principles laid down for us that we as believers, must follow. So the only hope of this world is the gospel of God's redeeming grace. What is the gospel? The gospel means good news, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. So we see this is a heavenly divine message. And we only find how to live in this book. This is the only way for any of us to know the principles that God has laid down for us. So Romans 6, 23, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So in Hebrews 5, verse 9, Hebrews 5, verse 9, And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. And then in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 9, But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels, for the suffering of Christ, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man, woman, and child. He did this for you. Jesus for, made for a little time lower than the angels, dies for man that he may lift men above angels into the family of God. Do you fear death? This is a question that I want you to answer. Well, here's what God's Word says about fear and death. In chapter 2 of Hebrews, verse 14 and 15, For as much then as the children are partakers, now this is those that had accepted Christ, partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself took part of the same that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil. He conquered death, he conquered sin, he conquered Satan. So we have no enemy. He cannot be conquered. Christ cannot be conquered. His word cannot be conquered. If you are defeated, it's because you don't know this book. This is the only way to know the true life, the abundant life. Everything he has in this book for us is the very best. And no one else can offer this to us. And in verse 15, now listen at this, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. You see, you're a slave to sin, and you're a slave if you're fearing, because there's no fear in the Lord. There's no fear in Him. So here, sonship is what we receive, our inheritance. Look at this. This is as many as received Him, received Christ, the gift. It is a gift. To them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. It is believing that saves you. So this is 
the gift that every person needs today. And if you don't know this gift, then we're going to teach it to you this week in a way that you can understand. So we will talk about this after my prayer. Our gracious and dear Heavenly Father, we come before the throne of grace. Thy grace is sufficient for every need. We come to the throne of grace to worship Thee in spirit and in truth. We want to worship Thee in the beauty of Thy holiness to offer the sacrifice of praise to Thee continually, the fruit of our lips, giving thanks unto Thee. And may every person that's listening today receive this gift of eternal life and become an heir of God and a joint heir with Jesus Christ. And this is the way for the abundant life to conquer all satanic powers against every person today that is truly a child of God. And as we're going to learn about the angelic host, that we have divine protection. Are they not all ministering spirits ministering to those that shall be heirs of salvation? This is how we live in this abundant life that He has given to us. I pray for every person today to their hearts will burn within them as the Word goes out, and they will have a deep, deep desire to turn from their sins, to be brought out of darkness into light, out of the power of Satan unto thee. And give them victory today, and we thank thee and praise thee that thou hast given us victory every moment of every day that we live. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against these truths. One hundredfold is thy perfect will. It's not thy will that any should perish. And we thank thee for them today. In Christ's name, amen. And then as we talk about that, we must understand, not only has he given us, but thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Everybody wants a victory. Everybody wants to win. You can't win apart from Christ. It's impossible. And you can never obey the Lord without growing in grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's impossible without Christ. Everything is. Everything is impossible. So we started last week with the greatest blessing. The only hope of this world is the gospel of God's redeeming grace. And Jesus Christ is God's love gift to the world, John 3, 16. Believers are the Father's love gift to Christ Jesus, John 17, 6. I'm going to read some of these to you. I'm not going to read all of them because I want you to study yourself in these books because that is the way you learn. You must read these books and apply them to your life as a child of God. So in John chapter 17, before he went to the cross, he was praying for us because he already knew who was going to be saved. So here he has these wonderful truths for us today. And I'm just going to give you a few of them so you can see the love of God, the love of Christ in these lessons. Here we see in John 17 verse. Now I want you to write these down and live these truths. John 17, verse 6. I have manifested thy name. Now, this is Christ talking to his heavenly Father. You know, he's the Son of God. You have to believe he's deity. He's the Son of God. He's the Son of man. He became man to go to the cross to die for you. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. And then verse 7, 
For I have given unto them the words. See, if we love somebody, we'll give them the word of God. The words which thou gavest me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came out from thee, and they have believed that thou did send me. Now, is there anything more important in life than knowing this? Nothing. Nothing. And then in verse 9, I'm going to give you verse 10. And all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. Is Christ glorified in our lives? He came to make known and manifest the Father. The Holy Spirit came to make known and manifest Christ. We are to make known and manifest Christ to this world. This is the great, the highest attainment is to know Christ. The highest attainment is to know Christ. Nothing else. If you know him, you have everything. And then follow along with these lessons and see what all we do have. This is something that you must understand. So then we see that in John 17, 11. Now it is Christ who commits the believer to the Father for safekeeping so that the believer's security rest upon the Father's faithfulness to His Son, Jesus Christ. And this is John 17, 11. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to thee. Holy Father, keep through thine own name those that thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are one. You see, we're one with Christ. We're one with the Heavenly Father. And in Colossians 3, if you be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth at the right hand of God. And you are dead to sin. You are dead to sin. And your life is hid with Christ in God. This is what we have in Him. Every person that's listening. I'm not going to read all of these, but I'm going to read verse 15. I want you to listen. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil one, Satan. You see, you're a slave to sin. You're, you're a slave. And if you don't accept Christ during the book of Revelation, you're going to be a slave because the Antichrist is going to be reigning and we're going to be in heaven with our Heavenly Father because the rapture takes place before that happens. And now I have to give this to you in John 3, 27. A man can receive nothing except it be given to him from heaven. Nothing. So here we see we obey him and then... Do you fear death? You don't. You, if you know Christ, you don't fear anything. Here we see, he says, Revelation twenty one seven. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Now we must see what this says in Galatians chapter three. This is amazing. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. The justified believer is a son uh, in the family of God. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. For ye are all one in Christ. And if you be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to to the promise. There is neither Jew nor Greek. This is it. We are all the same as a child of God. Now we're one. Remember, that's what we're to understand. Neither male nor female. We're all one. And then in Galatians 4, and because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Wherefore, thou art no more a servant, but a son. 
And if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. An heir of God. So we can see that in God transferred the sin of the world, your sin and my sin, to Christ. Now listen at this. John 1, 29, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. God forsook Christ on the cross instead of forsaking us. Our substitute judged in our place. I want you right now, every person, to just sit down and look at our hands and see our sins were laid on him. Our sins were laid on him. Those nail prints should have been in our hands. You should just weep because his hands bore our sins. He said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? No man has ever, ever suffered the way he did. He was despised and rejected. Now, if you're rejected in this world, you praise God. He looked down from the cross and he said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. God will in no wise, in no wise reject anyone that comes to him. And he knows your heart. You may can fool your parents. You may can fool everybody. But God knows every word. We're going to answer to him for every word that we speak. This is why we must obey him. And then in Colossians, this is our sonship now. You have to understand this. Colossians 1.12, giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the saints of light. We're not anymore in darkness. We are a saint of light. Acts 26.18 I have to read this to you because this is so important. Acts 26, 18. Paul said he had been called of God to open the eyes of the Gentiles and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God that they may receive forgiveness of sin and inheritance. That's our inheritance among them, which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Can you imagine what that is like? Just think of this. We're one with him. We're hid with him. You are washed. You're sanctified. You're justified in Christ. Being justified by faith. We have peace with God, being justified. Now, as we serve him, because all the things you do before you're born again, you're not going to receive any reward or any inheritance for that. Now we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works. He's going to reward me for this. I will give you the rewards I have lived these truths, and I know they work. This is our inheritance, to be brought out of darkness into light, out of the power of Satan unto God. And Satan is your enemy. He hates you. Satan is your enemy. Satan has no love. He wants to drag you down into an eternal hell because he knows where his abode is. That's where he's in the bottomless pit during a thousand-year reign when Christ is going to be reigning as king, as king of kings and lord of lords. And we're going to have a new body that never hurts, a body of light. And then in John 3, 15, for 
who, that whosoever believeth on him should never perish, but have eternal life. This is eternal salvation, eternal sonship. And then in Hebrews 1, 4, this is where we see the wonderful truth of the angels watching over us. That's our eternal salvation. Now listen, Hebrews 1, 14, are they not all ministering spirits, ministering to those that shall be heirs of salvation? You see, this is what the world needs. And now eternal salvation is in Hebrews 5, verse 9. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all that obey him. What glory this is. So this is referring to eternal salvation, the reverence to physical safety and well-being of the believers. And then in Luke 16, 22. Now, when the time comes, I've got to get this in because this is something you must understand. Physical death is a consequence of sin. Physical death affects the body only. Because when you are born, you do not have a spirit. You only have a body and a soul. Your body is going to go back to dust. Your soul, your imagination, memory, reasons, and affections, conscience, memory, reasons, and affection. If you are not born again, your spirit, no one can, no person can commit suicide. No person can commit suicide. Your body goes back to dust. Your soul goes to a place of torment unless you are born again by the Spirit of God. And then when the time comes, it's just the Spirit of God and our soul are carried into heaven by the angels. Now, I'm giving that to you right now. You must understand this. There's no pain in death. There's no fear in death. Christ conquered that on the cross. He says in Luke 16, 22, angels receive the departing saints, the soul and the spirit. The beggar had died. There was a rich man and the beggar. And was he was carried into heaven. It was Abraham's bosom at that time, paradise. But after Christ died, we go. the angels carry us right into heaven, our spirit and our soul. But you see, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. That body's going to die regardless. But we can live this life because in Luke, now this is amazing because you must understand this. In Luke chapter 16, this is what happens. And you can understand that your, it is the blood that makes an atonement for your soul. Remember, crucifixion atones our sins. The resurrection eradicates them. He never remembers them no more. So here it is in Luke chapter 16. But the rich man, not because he was rich, but because he rejected Christ. No one goes to hell but you that make that decision before you die. No one. God doesn't send anyone to hell. And in hell, this rich man lifted up his eyes, being in torment, and seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But see, after death, it's too late. He couldn't go from that gulf of where the beggar was. Listen what the beggar did. Listen to this. And desiring to be fed crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. 
but now he's in a place of perfect peace. This is why I'm here for you. Because no person can commit suicide. Your body just goes back to dust. And then that's when the rapture takes place. We're going to be raptured. The bodies of, uh, and I'm going to read that to you. So we let me finish on this first. And this, he says, but Abraham, his son, remember that in thy lifetime receiveth the good things. Likewise, Lazarus, evil, evil things. But now he is comforted and you are tormented. And he said, I pray thee, Father, to, that thou would send someone to my father's house. I have five brethren, and I don't want them to come to this place. I don't want anybody to go there. But it's true. These words are true. And then we're going to get, we're, our bodies are going to be raised, and then we are going to meet him in the clouds. And if you haven't looked up at the clouds lately, just look up there. And here's what's going to happen for us as believers. We're already there. Our spirit and soul are already in heaven. And now our body is going, because we're going to meet him in the clouds at the rapture. Now listen at this. First Thessalonians chapter 4. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. We're going to be with him forever. With a new body that never hurts. And then those people that, and I have to read this to you. He says, flesh and blood cannot enter heaven. He says, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. But listen at verse 1 Corinthians 15, but God giveth it a body, and it hath pleased him, and every seed his own body. We, our bodies, listen at this, verse 8, we are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and present with the Lord. You see what we have? These are the angelic hosts. And are they not all ministering spirits? If you don't know Psalm 91, I'm going to give you the first thing. This is our traveling psalm. Wherever we go, listen at this. This is the most important thing for you to understand. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. We have divine protection. That is our inheritance. Oh, I pray that every person today will understand these truths.